Many oat millers are not accepting oats that have been treated with pre-harvest glyphosate. And this can cause harvest management issues for producers with variable fields. There are other practices which may help with field maturity, but many of them have a downside. Seeding early is good, but logistically you can't seed everything early. Reducing N will hasten maturity, but it will also reduce yield potential and not address the issue of field variability. Perhaps variable rate would be a solution to the problem. Swathing is an option, but it also has a weathering risk. In many cases, field variability forces many producers to leave their oats standing in the field for longer, creating a greater risk for poorer grain quality and higher harvest losses. The objective of this study is to determine if some varieties of oats have better resistance to quality deterioration when harvested late. The trial contains six commonly grown milling oats, which will be harvested at the ideal time when grain is close to 12 and 13.5% moisture, and then late, around early to mid-October. The varieties we are evaluating include Arberg, Camden, Minstrel, Ruffian, Summit, and Ori 3542. In addition to Yorkton, other participating sites in the study include Redverse, Melford, and Indian Head. As you can tell from the short stature of the crop in that intro, Yorkton was pretty dry in 2021. When averaged over variety, our yields for the early harvest were 61 bushels per acre and 68 bushels per acre for the late harvest. Our late and early harvest dates were much earlier than we had planned because the crop was quickly ripening due to drought. Our early harvest date at Yorkton was August 11th and the late harvest date was August 30th. To our surprise, the yield for the late harvest was significantly higher than the early harvest. A couple things might explain this. First, the late harvest, it's not that late and shelling hadn't become a concern. Second, there may have been more seed filling in the immature secondary tillers, which often form when drought is followed by late season rainfall. At the other sites, timing of the late harvest was into September and shelling became an issue as well as lodging at Indian Head and Melfort. Substantial yield losses were realized at these sites when delaying crop harvest by about 25 to 30 days. But yield losses were not always statistically equal between varieties. At Indian Head, there was a significant interaction between harvest timing and oat variety. In other words, the magnitude of the yield loss from harvesting late differed between the varieties. Here you can see Arberg and Camden are not losing as much yield compared to the other varieties. There technically wasn't a significant interaction at Melfort, but the yield losses followed a somewhat similar pattern to Indian Head. At Melfort, Arberg and Camden have again lost less yield compared to Ruffian and Summit. Shelling was an issue for all varieties when harvested late at Indian Head and Melfort. Lodging was also an issue for Ruffian and Summit. Here are the lodging ratings for each variety at Melfort in blue and Indian Head in orange. The ratings are on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being completely flat to the ground. You can see Summit suffered severe lodging at both locations and CDC Ruffian suffered moderate to severe lodging at Melfort. This is consistent with regional information which rates the lodging resistance of these varieties as only good compared to very good for the other varieties. There were actually interactions between variety and harvest date for all locations, but the effects were different for each location. Test weights sometimes went up with late harvest and sometimes went down, and the varieties which showed the biggest changes differed at each site. It's impossible to say for certain which varieties will maintain better test weights when harvested late. However, this study supports what we have consistently observed over a number of years. Summit usually has the highest test weight and Camden usually has the lowest test weight. When averaged over harvest date, Summit frequently had the highest test weight and Camden the lowest. Let me show you the results. This is Indian Head. You can see by the blue arrows up top that Summit has the highest test weight 
and C is Camden the lowest, as indicated by the red arrows. The same was true at Melfort. Summit the highest, Camden the lowest. And here's Yorkton showing the same result. Summit the highest, Camden the lowest. At Redverse, things were a little different. Summit had the second highest test weight and Camden only the third lowest. Here are all the test weights for each site together. At Gray Miller's, oats with a test weight below 245 grams per half a liter are discounted and are generally rejected below 230 grams per half a liter. So above the gray box, no discounts. Within the gray box, oats are being discounted. And below the gray box, they are being rejected. You can see 2021 was a rough year for test weights and C.S. Camden is cause for concern. However, Camden is frequently delivered to grain millers and I am told there have been very few cases where oats have been rejected based on low test weight. This had me scratching my head as we frequently see cases where test weights of Camden have been cause for concern. It has been suggested to me that producers may be blowing more light seed out the back when combining than we do with our experimental plots. This may be helping producers to keep their test weights higher than what we find from our research plots. Could be the case. I don't know. Conclusions regarding late harvest. I've decided to summarize my conclusions in a table regarding the relative yield, test weight, and lodging resistance for each variety when harvest was delayed. No variety contained all the best attributes. However, Arberg was a fairly solid variety. It had a good yield that resisted yield loss when harvest was delayed. It maintained a test weight in the middle of the pack and had a good to fair resistance to lodging when harvested late. The problem with C.S. Camden was its relatively low test weight. However, it is commonly grown for grain millers and few shipments of Camden are being rejected based on low test weight, so it doesn't appear to be a big problem. Camden showed good resistance to yield loss and lodging, and this is probably why many producers are growing this variety. Minstrel demonstrated excellent to good resistance to lodging when harvested late. However, its relative yield and test weight were variable, ranging from good to poor. Ruffian only had fair to poor resistance to lodging when harvested late. Its yield potential varied widely from good to poor, and its test weight was generally good. Summit had very good test weights. Unfortunately, its lodging could be poor to very poor when harvested late, and yields were often relatively poor. ORE 3542M had excellent to good lodging resistance when harvested late, but its yield and test weight could be quite variable from good to poor. So if test weights have not been an issue for you, then just keep growing your Camden. If they have, consider another variety. But if lodging has been an issue for you, then stay away from Ruffian and Summit. Maybe give CDC Arborg a try. Like I said at the beginning, no variety had the best of all attributes.